Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? It's your boy Toby D, and you already know it's Faith Football Fans, my Christian audio podcast. Man, what a win, what a win, what a win today. Now, I felt like going into the Georgia Dome, we was going to get this win, but I did not picture us doing this the way we did it today. Not only doing it the way we did it today, but against the Carolina Panthers. Now, let, let, me, let me tell you, I don't think y'all understand the magnitude of what just happened. Not just this win today, but the other two wins leading up to this win. Now, coming into this, all you heard experts and fans alike from the Carolina Panthers say is that the Falcons didn't play a defense that could really show that their offense was for real. Now, I'm paraphrasing that because a lot of it, a lot of these fans in particularly uh, got ugly with it. We're talking about our Falcons offense. But not only do you put up over 500 yards against, let's see, Oakland Raiders week two, New Orleans Saints week three, and then you come back and put up over 500 yards of offense on a top number three defense in the Carolina Panthers. Now, you know excuses are going to be because I already heard Troy Aikman and them listening to the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers game talking about the Falcons. Is it really the Falcons are that good or is Carolina struggling? Well, you know that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the storyline that the Carolina Panthers need to be concerned about their season. They're one and three. They have a lot of issues over there. Ron Rivera needs to fix it. Cam Newton is out with a concussion. I'm going to pray for you, Cam Newton, by the way, man, because I don't like to see anybody get hurt. But when you come into a game already hit 56 times before you get into this game, and the Falcons were hitting him plenty. Now that last legal hit down at the goal line where they were going for it for two, and they got the two, Cam Newton goes out with a concussion. Even with the taunting he was doing, I still don't like my man to get hurt. He is an Atlanta native. And I hope he gets well soon. Now, of course, Derek Anderson got in here and he did some things to us. But you know what? Who really cares? When you're up the way that you're up, every time Carolina did come down to score, what did the Falcons do? They came and answered back, whether it was offensively or defensively, making sure that the game was not going to become a reverse storyline for today. Now, Listen, Matt Ryan has been balling out of his mind. Now he's at 11 touchdowns, I believe, and two interceptions. Now, the one interception, you got to give credit to the Carolina Panthers, though. They had a great special teams game plan for us Falcons today where they were pinning us down at that one line yard line quite a bit. But at least three of those times out of probably the four times they did that, we punished them. With 90 plus yard drives for touchdowns. Now week one, the Falcons had one of four in the red zone. And the talk already started with red zone woes. The Falcons continued their red zone woes going into week one against Tampa Bay Bucks. What's it starting to seem like a week one distant memory now because we're already through the first quarter of the season. Uh, with Tampa Bay about to be one and three, if not they one and three right now, because when I was watching it, it was a, another weather delay. Uh, so they'll be one and three by the time the night is over, if not by the time you finish hearing this. Carolina one and three, and we contributed to that. Uh, we contributed to New Orleans zero and three start, which looked like they'll be one and three tonight. So it looks like right now, even though it's early. Those three will be fighting between who will be second, third, or fourth. Now, we still have a long ways to go, but, man, you got to be excited right now as a Falcons fan about what you saw today. This offense went in and scored and ran the ball up and down the field at will. Now, last year, we were running the ball up and down the field, but we couldn't score. When you come from the Oakland Raiders where you 
are three for six over 50 percent uh in red zone and then you you come back from that and you're like five or seven against new orleans and then you come back and you're like what three for four or something like that in the red zone or two for three or however the case it don't even matter because you still had over 50 percent in your red zone guys that is some wonderful scoring now i just want to thank sean mcdermott now i sent out a youtube saying that if sean mcdermott can figure out how to stop this offense that i would give him props well i can't do that because sean didn't do it but i do want to thank you sean for helping us to send a message out in the bottom we just sent a message out to every defense out there with 12 more weeks to go in the season. Now, Denver, when you come off playing this game, don't tell me that you don't think you're going to be nervous. I understand that you and Mr. Wade Phillips, y'all have a good defense there. And we do have to go up to the mile high, but you lost your quarterback, your seventh round quarterback at that. Mark Sanchez didn't make it. You had to go to uh, Paxton Lynch. We'll see how that goes. Now, there is a bit of bad news. Shout out to Sean Witherspoon. Man, he just can't take a catch a break. Um, the word is, is now he, he suffered a calf injury and Achilles injury. Man, I'm going to be praying for you, Spoon, man. You are such a good guy, man. Hopefully you can return back at some point. Uh, and Deion Jones did go out with a calf injury too. But according to Von McClure, he said that Deion Jones said that he was okay. So let's hope so because Devondre Campbell, the word is that he's out four to six weeks. Well, of course, he's already been out about three weeks already. But now we know confirmation that is a high ankle sprain. And when you get those high ankle sprains, you can be out just about that much time. Praying for you, buddy. Come on back. But anytime when you're doing what we're doing and three games consistently the way that we're doing it, I would say that this last time of 500 yards of offense over that and the touchdowns, Matt Ryan got four, by the way, today. Uh, and he did throw the ball deep and connected quite a few times to those who talk about he couldn't throw it longer than 10 yards. Uh, it just so happens the one he threw for about 15 yards, the Julio, Julio takes it on about 75 more yards to the house. Whoo, shout out to Julio Jones, by the way. I said it. The first full defense that decides to play man to man and get out of football logic and double teaming, triple teaming Julio Jones. Guess who's going to pop out? And Julio Jones popped up with 300 yards and a touchdown. Matt Ryan also had a history record-breaking day with over 503 yards for the first time in his career. Man, he making me eat all kind of crow. I got to give it to him. I'm eating all kind of crow because I did have some doubts coming into the season, especially when that tweet came out over with the Instagram that when he said uh, 52 of us and 5 million of you we got a really big team. Now, let's go win some really big rings. Now, he's got me believing. And I'm excited, man. He keeps playing at this level. We got a chance to go not only to the playoffs, win the division, but deeper into the playoffs. Now, we got some banged up guys on the defensive side of the ball. And I got to give it up for Dwight Freeman. This guy, to be 36 years old, still has it. He already has two sacks against two division opponents. And he's just getting warmed up. Ladies and gentlemen, now if we can just get Vic Beasley, turn it up, and I think he will. But Vic, he he, he loves Cam Newton because he gets out to Cam when he plays Cam. Y'all got it. Y'all got to give it up about that. And Robert Alford, you almost had me hot with you with that one penalty, but you made up for it with two picks, and one of them is a pick six. And Jalen Collins is returning back in week five, and it looks like we'll be facing Paxton Lynch. Um. Week five against the Denver Broncos. And I'll be talking about that game later. But man, listen, I know I didn't probably even cover everything that I could have covered. But uh, it feels good to be on top again another week. And we will at least get to enjoy this a couple more weeks. Unless we can get this win over Denver, then we'll stretch that out to about four more weeks that the experts and other fans in our division will have to suffer through those weeks of us being on top. Uh, this time around. Again, my name is Toby D. Faith Football Fans. Peace. I'm gone.